An OpenEXR file is a container that can hold multiple images, similar to a Photoshop file, but without any information about image stacking order. By dragging a folder containing numbered images into Autograph, you can also drag in the first image of the sequence. Double-clicking on this sequence allows us to display it in the viewer. The reader properties allow us to access images within this container. These sub-images are sometimes called passes, or arbitrary output variables, also known as AOVs, representing different image components like shadows, reflections, object colors, pixel distances from the camera, and more. Among these passes, there is often a pass called combined or beauty pass, which represents the combination of all the graphical passes calculated by the render engine. Here, we'll use this combined pass to quickly arrange a compositing setup that blends various sources found on the hard drive. At the same time, we'll import a second image sequence representing a spaceship, which also contains multiple passes, but we'll focus the reader on the combined pass again. An OpenEXR file doesn't have to contain multiple passes. For example, here we'll use another image sequence containing only one pass, representing smoke coming out of the spaceship's engines. We actually have two variations of the same sequence, one representing dense, slow smoke, and the other representing faster, more spread out smoke at the engine's exhaust. By right-clicking on the image sequence representing the ground, and selecting Create Composition from Footage, we'll get a composition that uses the same image size, duration, and frame rate as the original footage. The combined pass is then extracted and displayed in the viewer. Similarly, we'll drag the sequence containing the spaceship to the top of the stack and then add the smoke, starting with the dense smoke and placing the more spread out smoke below it. We'll start by adding a grade modifier to the ground which lets us reduce the brightness. We want to keep the same black and white values, but we'll adjust the gamma value, for example by entering a value of 0.65. In the project panel, we'll import a JPEG file that simply contains a sky image, which we'll drag below the composition to add it as a background. This image is relatively large and has various shades ranging from light to dark. This lets us adapt the content according to the desired brightness. We can simply go to the end of the animation, press the P key on the keyboard to display the position of this layer, create a new keyframe, and then go to the beginning and adjust the positioning of this image to match the camera movement. A second animation keyframe will automatically be created. We'll add a new adjustment layer that'll make use of a layer image generator, onto which we can add additional modifiers, like a glow effect. We'll start by increasing the extent of this glow by increasing the size parameter. Then we'll increase the value of the downscale threshold to avoid flickering, especially when the silhouette of these engines is really thin. Finally, we'll decrease the gain value to reduce the intensity. OpenEXR files can contain a large number of passes, so the disk space and decryption time for each pass can be significant. In another video, we'll go over how to use proxies within the reader to optimize responsiveness when working with these types of elements. Compositing itself isn't the most time-consuming part of the overall process here. To make the foreground and background more uniform, we'll use a gradient generator. We'll start by placing this gradient below the spaceship in the stack. We'll change the layer blending mode to screen, which interprets luminance as transparency. Then we can control blending by adjusting the layer's overall opacity using the controller. Next, we'll use the gradient control points to place the brightest and densest part at the bottom of the image and the most transparent part towards the top. We'll duplicate this gradient and place it at the top of the stack to better even out the background and foreground by adding fog. To keep things simple, the two control points defining this gradient haven't been animated, but you'll see that it's entirely possible to do that. To perfect this very simple compositing project, which is intended only as a preview of a more complex compositing project, we'll add another adjustment layer to the stack and add a defocus modifier to it. This will be controlled by another gradient, and we'll animate its control points. 
We'll go to the beginning of the animation and go into the defocus modifier settings to add a new gradient to the depth map parameter. These control points will define the intensity of the defocus in space to position the transition between the blurred and sharp areas. The defocus modifier allows you to define light intensity for maximum blur. By placing two animation keyframes on the gradient's position 1 and position 2 parameters, we can make this defocus follow the camera movement. This is how you can quickly set up a compositing project using combined or beauty passes.